St. Luke Catholic Church was founded more than 125 years ago to serve parts of River Forest, Oak Park, and Forest Park. As their numbers swelled, the people built the current St. Luke Church at the corner of Lake Street and Lathrop Avenue in River Forest in 1937. Almost 90 years later, with funds donated in our 125th anniversary capital campaign, the church is now receiving some long overdue care to make sure that it lasts another 125 years. Hi, Father Smith here, Pastor St. Luke Parish. Good morning, I'm uh, with a team and we're kind of looking through some of the uh, tuck pointing project here on the bell tower. Most people don't have an appreciation for the level of work that's going into this, but uh, the team of uh, Berglund Construction has been working here since uh, May, and much of it has been on our wonderful bell tower. As you pass by every day, you don't see a lot of the details, so this part of this tour is to help you to appreciate just the beauty of the structure itself. Most people pass by every day on the street, they'd never be able to appreciate the detail, the intricate work in the stone that was put here some uh, 80 years ago. And uh, back in those times, the level of technology and construction, materials available, and you can see the devotion and care that people put in the, and craftsmanship into the, into the church. So it's a wonderful opportunity just to kind of see the level of work that was done then and the need, level of needed work now to maintain our, our fine church. Uh, tuck pointing has been done, stones numbered, people don't realize that. It's like taking apart a, a, a kit and then rebuilding it again. So everything's very organized, it's not just simply laying bricks upon brick. But uh, very detailed and uh, wonderful work and excellent craftsmanship. This is part of the bell tower tracery. It's an area which has intricate stonework, and much of the stones over the years have been displaced or even loosened. Um, part of the work that Berglund's done for us is being able to test the stones where they're loose, they pin them together, forcing mortar behind them, and then relocating them and putting them in proper position. Again, each stone taken out and renumbered where they're loose and then set back into place. The beauty of working on a bell tower, however, if it rains out, since it's a covered structure, a lot of the work could be happening inside. So it's kind of a dual purpose thing and uh, a way to utilize the, the workers and uh, those who are doing the grinding and tuck pointing so no time is really wasted even on a rainy day. inside into the inside of the bell tower. No, we don't have real bells. We have pretty good facsimile bells, uh, programmable bells that uh, toll during the project. The bells have been turned off for the sanity of our workers and those working in construction. But as uh, you will see in the rest of this little video snippet, uh, you look inside the bell tower, you just see the scaffolding and everything that's been uh, set up in there, the intricacy of all the work that's going there too. Um, also the grading that you see from the outside from street level has been pulled aside so that more work can be uh, uh, done on this tracery uh, here of these small stones that are inset into the larger structure of the bell tower itself. King Brick and in those days they didn't want to pay attention to the aesthetics, it was pretty much just structural. So they put the bricks in, slapped some mortar in there, and, and the, but ice and snow and water damage has displaced stones or even damaged them completely, so they have to be replaced with a, with a completely new stone. So here you see some of the work that they're doing in replacing the stones. Again, from ground level, you don't even know this stuff is happening, or the cracking that's going on behind with the stones. Uh, but uh, a lot of that will be redone and bricks set in place and, and remortared. And then even they use kind of a, a mortar that's the consistency of cake batter with actually a tool that's almost like a, uh, a, a icing 
uh, spreader uh, like a baker would use and that's just forced into the little intricate grooves and seeps back there forming a, a, a lasting bond with the existing stone. Okay, we're, we're on a critical level of the tuck pointing here right now. This is an area just below where four stones at the corners of our bell tower were displaced in the 80 or so years due to water and ice and seepage. And they were, some have been displaced as, many, as much as three inches. We could have done a variety of different repairs. One would have been something like Wrigley Field where you put a, me, a, a mesh wrap around the church which wouldn't be scenic nor would it be uh, something worthy of a church. Uh, you could have done other kind of shortcut measures in the meantime but ours will be a lasting fix but involved moving several of the large stones and right now the men are in the process on the southwest corner of the bell tower hoisting the stones up and then putting mortar behind there and then putting them back in place. Very uh, time consuming, but it's a, it's a level of danger with it too because of the weight of these stones. So you can actually see some of that, we'll see some of that going on uh, as the video continues. Another feature of the entire tuck pointing project was the cleansing of the outer stones of both the facade of the church off of Lake Street and also the bell tower itself. Kind of a chemical wash, environmentally friendly materials, chemicals that were used to wash the surface of the stone, removing the blackness of time and pollution and dirt, and even the algae that settles into limestone such as this. Two types of limestone that are here. The Indiana limestone, so you may be familiar with the movie years ago, Breaking Away. The cutters, the people in Indiana that kind of cut away limestone and that was their living as they kind of quarried it and found the stones and then also the other stone which is more uh, tan in appearance and often gray the Joliet type of limestone kind of a layered type of limestone very different from the Indiana which is kind of coarse but again they clean up very nicely and that's part of the, the work that's gone on too that was actually the first step before the grinding and the tuck pointing would take place. We're here on the northwest corner of the bell tower where the, most, the work was the most extensive because of an almost three inch displacement in some of the stones. We're just above the stones which were the real culprits. The, there's three layers of stones. The middle one had been displaced the most. So how to get at those stones uh, which weigh uh, about 2,000 pounds a piece and uh, you can't just shift that easily so they devised the system of hoisting which has saved us a lot of money rather than calling in a big crane which you'd have to rent for $5,000 a day and so they developed the system of hoisting by having holes through the stone which they would later patch and then hoisting that with a series of cables and chains. Uh, so the middle stone was able to uh, be set aside after the top one was hoisted out of position and then the backing would be created with this loose mortar mix again and then this entire thing set back into place. So a lot of work uh, went on. This was the worst corner of all of the corners of the bell tower and the others are being kind of patterned after that. We're on level two right now. One more level up to the top of the bell tower. You can see again the intricate work that would have gone on. I mean, they don't make them like this anymore, folks. Um, or it would cost just literally a fortune. Uh, but you can see the intricate carved limestone and the, the moldings and different things. This wonderful shield there. Nothing written on it. Kind of write your own story here as you come to the top of the church and all things drawn to God, uh, but what a wonderful experience just to be up here and you see the wonderful work that's going on. It's really uh, something to marvel at.
we've made it to the top, and I'm standing next to the cross, one of the four crosses, subject of my recent contest, guess the height of the cross. So you can see it's a little taller than me uh, as I'm standing here. Again, if I was standing at the bottom level, this entire parapet here and the cross itself would come out to some 76 inches, 6 foot 4 inches tall. And uh, across itself, from here to here, 53 inches with 23 inches of parapet base below it. Again, of uh, Indiana limestone, and uh, it's in very good shape. It'll be here hopefully for many, many years to come. Thanks to the efforts of all our parishioners and uh, uh, also Dave Hodge and the entire construction team working here. Okay, finally, uh, the De Prado Regali firm has just finished the renovation to our front and the largest stained glass piece here on the church, right off of Lake Street, right above the main entrance as you come in. What they did was clean the glass surface both inside the church and outside. There was a great deal of oxidation from the lead, and since there's so much lead as part of these windows, it had given the window kind of a black appearance. They also removed a uh, protective glass plating that had been put up, I believe sometime in the 70s, which was opaque and kind of a pebble grain finish which diffused, diffused the light not allowing a lot of light into the uh, church and also penetrate the stained glass itself. They replaced it with a laminated, very strong type of glass, which is a little more pricey than regular plate glass. It's a, a little uh, thicker than quarter inch, and it's a clear glass that allows light, maximum penetration of light through the window, and also maximum protection. It is also vented in several places. You can see a little disc that's been drilled out of the glass and a little vent put there to allow aeration and drying of the windows and uh, so moisture doesn't build up and deteriorate the frames, the glass or the, the leading itself on the, in each stained glass panel. And then they also caulked each window, made sure that they're fully functional in terms of the ones that are on hinges, oiling them, making them work. Uh, on bowing any bent glass and uh, just a wonderful work again which should last for many many years and for successive generations here at St. Luke Parish. Hi Father Smith here as we conclude our tour of the uh, bell tower and the construction project. As you can see it's 11 layers of scaffolding that goes up and all that just the work to put that up but then you see the level of complexity and the care that these men are doing from Berglund Construction and uh, also from Fodor Engineering, John Fodor, parishioner, and uh, just the wonderful work that's going on here. So I continue to please uh, pray for the success of this project, that it could go well, and that St. Luke Church can exist for many generations to come. God bless. Thank you for joining me on this tour.